please welcome on to the show, standing five foot eleven inches, one hundred ninety four pounds, <laughs> Jim Thorpe finalist, and your starting safety of the Pitt Panthers, Brandon Hill. Brandon, how you doing today? Yes, sir. I'm doing great. Doing great. How are you? Right Pretty good. There. <laughs> Hang, <laughs> hanging in there might be a little yes, bit sir. better of a description yeah that. so uh <laughs> thank you so much for joining us um we're we're very interested in hearing your pit story you were uh, one of the better prospects in the central florida region uh coming out of high school how did you become intrigued in pit what did your recruitment process look like and how did you get here um, our uh, recruitment process, it, um, it opened up at the end of my junior year, and Pitt was, all, was always radar, um, as far as my knowledge, um, receiving the offers. But before the offer, they was always interest. They would, show, they would show love on Twitter or say good luck with games. So the interest was always there, so I knew. So I knew like their interest in me was real and it maybe hit me up once uh, in a blue moon, uh, stuff like that. So, so yeah, um, but it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a long process. It was a blessing and a time being that um, I'm the first person to be, to go to college and my family going wow. through that and having, also having the people like around me to help me along the way as far as coaches and my, uh, that I was dealing with at the time, family members, um, and older guys ahead of me that so. Um, but as soon as I got to Pitt, so I fell in love with it, fell in love with the city, um, the coaching staff, they showed me love as soon as on the official visit. And um, it was just a great experience. We enjoyed ourselves the whole week. And our official visit weekend, we had like, 13 commits in that whole weekend. So that's a Pittsburgh and their football, their football facilities and what they can do for their players stand for that. And I, and I'm blessed and I don't regret this decision at all. Well, we're very happy to have you here. And I think something really interesting yes, about sir. your career is uh, the way you got sent into action uh, mid season, Paris Ford opted out and, you were thrown into action. Uh, what was that like? Were you nervous being uh, or getting your first start midway through a season? Uh, or how that stepping in for someone with as much of a, a on the field reputation as Paris Ford? Yes, sir. Most definitely. Um, I was ready for the moment. Um, I was confident in my training and my pre 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 uh, preparation. For the game, and always be ready when your number's called. That's what I always just try to be because it could happen any game. When someone, God forbid, someone gets injured, or in that in that case situation, he did opt out, stepping in and just being ready to fill that role. And I feel like the guys around me, older guys around me, helping me always along the way, even in the film room and add on the prime Lynn and Paris for to help me along coming in as a freshman and just this teach me go teach me about the college football scene. So being being playing behind those guys and seeing how I did things right, it was it was I wasn't nervous about the transition because I was confident and and the work I put in with the guys ahead of me. Yeah, I don't know why I asked if you're nervous because you Stepped in and made plays right away. That was your first game. You had that pick six, correct? As a starter. Yes, sir. Florida State. Yeah, that, yeah. You, I think you had a game high actually, eight tackles, right? Yes, sir. That was actually my dream school. Like grown mm. in middle school, <laughs> and I had I had a Florida State book bag, the Florida State extra camp in eighth uh, eighth grade, ninth grade, so. Um, I've always been a Nose fan, but that game meant a lot to me to get that first start and to, like you said, get a pick six. Um, uh, also recorded a game high, so I, I'm always going to remember that game. I love that game. So did Florida State recruit you at all out of high school? 
they didn't like recruit me at all. I didn't wow. really get any Florida schools like that. I think the only Florida school recruited by was FAU and FIU at the time. And FAU was actually my first offer. I got FIU um, soon after that. But other than that, those were the only. And then I'm sorry, I also made it off, made the offer. But other than that, not, not really any Florida schools outside of those four recruiting me. So is it gratifying to beat up on a school that you might have been interested in attending but didn't give you the same love that you were hoping for? Yeah, most definitely because you seen what you you seen what you missed out on, but <laughs> um that they need for me to to feel like to make their team successful and I'm just so blessed. Um had uh, granted me the offer and that I made, I was able to make this decision for a great career year. And I guess I don't regret this decision at all. Absolutely. So you, you mentioned that you had a career year. Um, you know, you were, you were a Jim Thorpe semifinalist this year. It's you had, you had an interesting trajectory because 247, you were the class of 2019, 247 only had you ranked as the 50th best safety in the class of 2019. Uh, but last year you were a semifinalist uh, for an award given to some of the best defensive backs in the country. What happened in those three years to allow you to get to that point? What happened behind the scenes to take you from, you know, top 50 in your position to top four in your, or top whatever in your position group? Mm -hmm. Just putting the work in, um, putting your head down and grinding, um, getting after it. Um, uh, I came in with a great group of guys in my um, in my 2019 class, coming in with those guys and just putting in the work that we did, and just just grinding, but not losing sight of what the end goal is, and just trying to keep keep um, getting better every day. We see here he. Um, he harps on getting three percent better every day, and that's also a way to walk in every day. Um, how can you how can you do something better? You can always be better at something. So set and leading into um, having that mindset into every practice, every game, and every season. That's the mindset around the city of Pittsburgh, actually. So just having that mindset oh, brought me here to today. Well, it seems like you have that mindset as well as a number of other guys on that defense who came in and kind of the same uh, yes, trajectory sir. as you. How excited are you to take the field with all of them this year? Basically, everybody's back from last year, uh, all kinds of preseason award watch lists. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun being on that defense. Yeah, it is. It's so fun. It's, we're going to be a fun defense to watch. We're gonna, you're going to see uh, – racing to the ball, making plays, having fun, uh, electric energy. Um, playing with all these guys, it's amazing. It, it makes it makes my job easier out there playing with guys like you can't see. So just having those guys on the defense, it's um, anything better than that. Well, I got to ask you this because I think playing safe to be a really fun position, but I'm like 5'9", a buck 50 soaking <laughs> wet. <laughs> what is more fun to you playing a big hit and forcing a fumble or getting an interception see look you know how i practice how i play i, I need that big hit so i can <laughs> take a lot you feel me i need that big hit so they know i'm here you feel me so yeah so probably definitely now, has... i need to go get that money this year though so 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 yeah the the big hit that's what we're, we're eyeing up but how do you how do you balance you know wanting to make someone know you're there and the very sensitive targeting rules in college we saw uh you know your predecessor paris ford had a little bit of trouble with the targeting uh how do you balance you know wanting to let let a receiver know that you're there and that they can't come over the middle on you mm -hmm. and also you know, trying to ensure that you stay in the football game. Hard. It's hard nowadays that um, because I think now they like they're taking targeting. So just um, 
just trying to keep your head out of the hit and just really like tech more textbook tackle technique chest up head up what um what um our coach we were young and and mighty mites uh to formally tackle so just reiterating those fundamentals that I, you shouldn't be caught with targeting well you had a problem with that uh some ticky tackies yeah. ones when a the other way against you. How bad does it suck being thrown out for something as like questionable as that? And then, well, you yeah. just need to stay on the field now. You don't have to go to the locker room anymore. Right? Yeah, you get to stay on the field. Yeah, they got, yeah, they caught me a couple times once last year when I first thing once this recent past year. So, um, it's hard, like, for me just getting to be out there with your boys making plays. Cause, like, every, it's like once you, every play, you want to be like the play you're not in is that's the play like you could have made or like you feel me so mm-hmm. definitely is home but i feel like the refs can take the game I feel like the refs take the game in the best of their so i mean it, it keeps the players safe but um yeah it's definitely hard though it's definitely hard watching and just like knowing that you like if you were out of half or or the second half, you know you can't go in at all. So if Brandon Hill was the uh, the commissioner of college football, what would you make any changes to the way targeting is handled? I feel like yes, I feel like because like I said nowadays there's any head on collision and then and then I feel like be like not like a head 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 to head collision yeah that okay that's that's targeting coming in like if it's not intentional because you can tell when there's something like intentional and then somebody is like a player trying to disrupt the ball mm-hmm. I feel like they should they should do like more more of the play instead of just uh, the whole play uh, as, as itself. So as far as that, I feel like we'll be straight either way. Mm. So we talked a little bit about this upcoming year and how excited you are about the unit that's going to be stepping out there. Uh, a lot of guys returning and then, um, you know, the the young players that are stepping in, we've heard phenomenal things about going into the season, whether it's DeShields or, uh, or Kamara or... or you know, uh, uh, you know, any of the young guys coming up on the defensive line, what is a name of somebody that we may not be thinking of that is going to make a major impact uh, this season on that pit defense? On the pit defense, um, Mm -hmm. like you said, this guy is coming up, but I really, Bengali Kamara, Bengali Kamara, I feel like for Bengali Kamara this year, I feel like he's gonna have a great year. He's athletic. Um, he think when he's out there, his this first year. Um, I f- yeah, I feel like he's gonna do great. He's fun to play with. He's a f- he also gonna have a f- out add another fun part and fun side to the defense. So that's one. Thing, that's one thing that stands out to me. Bengali Kamar, most definitely. Yeah, we got a little bit of a taste of him towards the end of the season, and he. He looked ready in the spring game, just seeing him out there. Yeah. That looks like a football player. Yeah, he's been ready. He's been ready to put in the work. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of being ready to play, uh, are you ready for the backyard brawl? We got 121 days from the day we're recording. Uh, <laughs> you're not a Pittsburgh native, but are you aware of the hatred behind that rivalry and, and how big it is for both fan bases? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not a Pittsburgh native, like you said, but – I'm aware. I'm aware of the hate um, that is going to be a big one. It's going to be a great game, great atmosphere, and I can't wait. I've never played in. Farm Ray is going to be a lot of fun, a lot of competition, maybe a lot of back. It's going, it is going to be a lot of nice, so just to be prepared. But now we're ready. We're locked in for the opener. Yeah, it's going to be. Has Coach Narduzzi played Country Roads during practice to get you guys annoyed yet? <laughs> um. I think um, we had a workout during one of the workouts. Stat, um, our um, head strength coach played like one of their songs, mm. and a lot like a hard finisher workout too. So like playing this song while we while we're in pain, so we can build that. Um, 
So just doing that, so do, just doing things like that, getting us ready for the game. There's a big rivalry, and we would, we would love to come out with the win. So we're ready to work, putting them ready. Is there anyone else next season that you guys really have circled on the schedule? I mean, obviously, uh, the return of the backyard brawl is a big deal, and then anytime we play – Miami or Virginia mm -hmm. Tech, big one. Is there another game you guys really have circled on the calendar for this year? I think we're ready for every Saturday that um, that answer. we're we're about to, we're about to do this. <laughs> we're about to have this. Like you said, we want to um, because we feel like we have a target on our back this year going, and how we had last year. So we're just ready to repeat. Um, Ready to repeat this year, off season, ready to work with that same the same goal and to exceed the goals we did last year. Everybody. Awesome. Well, we love to hear it because uh, you know the expectations are high in in Pittsburgh, and it's it's been a while. Yes, sir, um, I'm, I'm I'm sure you're aware. It's been a while since uh, since Pitt fans have you know had a season where we went into it with this high of expectations mm -hmm. uh you know the program had its struggles mm -hmm. for like you know 40 years um so it's you know we're, we're really excited to hear that you guys are excited and that you know the the target is on the moon you know um mm -hmm. yes sir most of so um we did want to ask uh what we've kind of dubbed the million dollar question or um maybe the three million dollar question. Uh, so we we've heard Pat Narduzzi, <laughs> we've heard Pat Narduzzi talk about how NIL has changed the game for coaches. You know, you have to not only recruit high schoolers, uh, but you have to recruit guys in the portal, and now you have to get guys, recruit them to stay on your team. Um, how different has it been from the veteran player perspective? You know, how is how has the transfer portal and you know that aspect of trying to get guys in the portal to come over or, you know, sometimes in, in some capacities, keep your own teammates on the team. How has it changed for you guys? Um, it, it definitely brings a different um, aspect to college football as far as finding out where they want to really go um and what's the best opportunities. It also puts another to go to that school. So, um, yeah, it's definitely different. But I feel like a veteran player now, I feel like just have to stay the course right now, just focus um, focus on getting better, focus on the games ahead, because everything will place if you do that. And um, that things that you want to, that, that, that you want to any rush or any like extra, extra, extra put on it. So just, to yourself and your abilities and just believe in that and I say you should be able to do uh, whatever you want. Is that something that players talk about though in the locker room or is that kind of a like outside of the locker room it's kind of on your own private kind of thing? Not not really in the locker room because like I said we try to like you said, just work every day and just the outside noise. Just like just keep everything in house and um just work from but yeah, probably yeah, most likely most likely out it's outside noise, probably bring it seeking in, but um uh, we don't um just try to keep keep focus, keep the peace and I gotcha. So um you know, with how tight knit of a team Pitt is and with how new some of the transfer portal and NIL stuff is, um, <clears throat> would you, if, if someone were to, you know, explore other options, um, you know, if a really op good opportunity came their way, would the team be more likely to root on a guy to, you know, chase that bag and, and you know, chase a once in a lifetime opportunity or are you more of a team oriented mindset that like, no, we're, we're building something here. You should want to stay here. And, and how do you balance those? I assume conflicting feelings. I feel like with me, I'm like, 
I'm a loyal, I'm a loyal dude. So like I've gone to four schools, school, one middle school, one high school, and now one college. So now I've never never transferred out any switch schools. Like I feel like once I start something, I, I wanna finish something there. You feel me? So mm-hmm. but I'm more on that side. So wherever wherever like I said, wherever position I'm in, um there and just keep adding on to whatever situation I'm in. I don't I don't look to locate or any other thing like that. I feel like I make the best out of any situation. So I look at it. I look at it. I look at it like that. Awesome. Well, we're we're really lucky, you know, as a program to have have someone with your dedication to to Pitt and and you know that the coaching staff and the team. And uh, we're incredibly excited to see you guys take the field this year. Um, regardless of anything, we think that this is one of the best teams Pitt has rolled out in decades. So we're really excited to see yes, what you sir. guys bring. Yes, sir. We're excited too. We're excited. Well, I guess since we have you here, uh, we can round things out with the starting safety's perspective on the quarterback battle. I mean, uh, we got a, a, mm. a USC transfer coming in, uh, Keaton Slovis, and then Nick Patty has been there. You've seen him a while. So you've probably seen the growth that he's displayed. Uh, what's it like defending each of them? Is there something that, uh, yes, each sir. of them brings to the table that's different from the other? Yes, sir. They both, they're both playing. They both last spring, they both played phenomenal competing every day with each other. It's like nobody can get ahead. Nobody can get feel me too far behind now they're competing. Um, now they're doing a, they're doing both of them are doing it from, uh, and I can't wait to see who wins this one, but, um, I feel like we will be great. We'll be all behind the center. Well, that's, that's something we love to hear. Last, last question. Um, who in that receiving group is the hardest to cover for you? Who do you who do you hate to go across from the most? Hardest. <laughs> okay, hardest to go. right now probably would be um, the, our new transfer, Kanate. Mm-hmm. Um, he came in he came in ready to work. Um, he was moves breaking down mid mid routes. Um, and I I feel like that's another that's tomorrow who is gonna. Who I feel like is gonna have a great year this year. Um, probably him though, staying from just getting his moves down. But um, yeah, he's he's he came in. Uh, I'm excited to see how well he will do this year for us. Yeah, he put on a crazy move uh, in the spring game first play. So uh, <laughs> a little taste of what the yeah, receiving room can bring to the table too, this year. Well, for sure, yes, sir. That's that's really really exciting to hear. Uh, I think. Something tells me we, me, we might just need him to perform this year. So, uh, so that's awesome to hear. Um, well, Brandon, yes, we sir. can't, we can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, we are unbelievably excited to see, you know, the product you guys put out next year and what the defense is looking like. I think we were talking about it yesterday. We think that this year we go back to holding teams to, you know, we aren't going to need to score 40 to beat a team. I, <laughs> I think we're going to, be the most dangerous defense the ACC has to offer, and, and you're going to be right at the middle of that. Yes, sir. You know it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, you know, get get some good R and R the next two weeks while you're back thank home you in guys. Florida, and hope you uh, come back ready to roll. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank Absolutely. Hell to pit. Hell to pit. Yes, sir. Hell to pit. You know it. (laughs) Awesome. I'll stop recording.